Dislike this video. Go on, that's why you came to this page, isn't it? You blindly follow the crowd of haters who are afraid of change for change's sake. You think that you're hip, young, rebellious. But you're wrong. You're the old people who are afraid of change, and the generations after you will beat you to the floor because they'll adapt and make use of the changes and improvements that you'll stubbornly ignore and refuse to use. Google Plus combining with YouTube was inevitable. We've been warned about it for months and the early movers reap the rewards come Judgment Day. Let's face it, YouTube was broken. Keeping track of comments amidst a never-ending stream of new, illiterate posts was a nightmare, and Google Plus simply allows you to view the same stuff but in a better, easier to follow format. Sure, there will be haters, but Google Plus has the added advantage of being huge and radical. Who else would dare make such a huge change to an already accepted system? With the new system, Google has answered problems we didn't even know we had, and we should be thankful to them for taking the plunge. They've removed limitations to the length of comments. They've allowed external links. It's a plus to anybody who genuinely wants to have a long and deep debate, or to reference external sources or related videos. In other words, Google is trying to encourage us to make YouTube a better place. However, these things can be used for bad as well as good, and sadly, the idiots are shouting louder than ever. I don't understand how they think they're helping. They're abusing the additional freedom and responsibility that they've been given for what? To prove that they're too stupid and immature to use it? I only hope these people get what's coming to them, because they're ruining it for those who are willing to make YouTube a better place. YouTube before the update was like a pro using Microsoft Paint. Very good at what they do, but limited by what is inherently a broken product, no matter how polished it can appear. The new update is like giving the same user Photoshop. They'll be rough around the edges and probably swamped by the new features at first, but in the long term it will lead to better results than they could ever have managed with paint. Sure, the new system has problems, but these are easily patchable and tweakable things. At least the core idea behind it works, which was the one bit that could never have been fixed with the old layout, no matter how many licks of paint pardon the pun, it was given. Personally, I don't like being forced to use a new system that I deliberately avoided previously. Facebook has everybody I know in real life on it, I don't need two websites trying to do the same thing. But Google Plus isn't doing that. In fact, merging it with YouTube has differentiated it from Facebook for me. Although there are the same people on both websites, the information it displays about them is very different. I don't add people I've met online to Facebook. I just don't. Even if I know them well, it shows me information about them I don't care about. What systems such as Steam and Google Plus show me about them is far more relevant to the kind of relationship I have with them. On the other hand, I wouldn't add my mum to Google+. The new system won't be accepted overnight. People are too stubborn to admit that they're wrong. One by one, they'll find uses for the new features. They'll make excuses, justifications as to why they're able to put up with it. Any update comes with resistance and Google isn't stupid. They know what they're doing. That's why they bought YouTube all those years ago before most of us even used it. They nurtured and supported the website we now know and love. They're not just going to sacrifice a popular website to help a failing one. Not unless it really does bring benefits to both. And this update has. Google's motto is do no evil. Sometimes that means making a tough decision, one that isn't based on short-term gain, but instead has its sights set for the long run. And cut.